Okay, so I am back in my office here. I know. I said I was starting a company that did board repair at component level only in a separate location, and you know what I realized? <laughs> I kind of miss my office, even if it is 47 degrees sometimes and unheated and very tiny and, you know, I miss it. And so here I am back. And I, I kind of learned to appreciate how cool it is to have a small laptop, cell phone repair store where all of this work is done on site in a back office by me. So here I am. Now, what I want to talk about today is how you should deal with somebody if you are looking to benefit from them, how you should deal with somebody if you want something out of them, if you are looking to prove that you know your stuff. If you want to prove that you know what you're doing and you're the man for this job and you are smart, how do you portray that? Now, this is not a video that I had planned to do. It's not something I scripted or wrote out. Like most of these videos, it's something where over the course of my day, I see what somebody has done. I see what somebody has said, and I see what they're looking to accomplish, and I just start laughing, and I, I, and I feel like sharing it with the world. So, on my YouTube comments the other day, I saw this comment on a video that I had done. It was a video on motherboard repair that I did at 2 or 3 in the morning. I'm visibly tired, exhausted. My, t my wall actually had a huge hole in it from how I, I fucked up the material here from uh, trying to hang a television. I was dead. And I'm explaining how a certain circuit works. It's a comment where it's going, this is wrong. This is a bad explanation. This is not how that works. And it was written in the most condescending fashion possible. Usually I, I won't reply to this. I'll ignore it. But this one time I decide to say, oh, interesting. Thank you for the information. Just for the hell of it, I wanted to see what would happen. I get a reply saying, oh, cool. By the way, I'm unemployed, looking for work. So I reply to it and I go, what field are you in? What do you do? And he says, if, you know, I can send you a resume and contact information and all that other stuff. Now, you don't usually send somebody a resume unless you're either looking for a job from them or you are looking for a job from somebody they know. So based on the fact that he offered to send me a resume, that kind of makes me wonder, you know, you're looking for employment. And it makes me think, you're actually looking for me in some way or another to help you with this process or else why would you offer to send me a resume? And what, what really seems silly here is if you want me to help you find a job, why are you going out of your way to explain something in the most condescending fashion? Because one of the things, again, when you, what I want you to think about when you're looking at what people are saying, what people are doing, and how they're doing it, I want you to look at their goals. So my goal here is not to be Professor Rossman who explains to you how the difference in the protons and the neutrons and the electrons and the flow of them affects how the motherboard works. I don't give a fuck about any of that information, nor do I care that you know that. What I'm trying to do here is prepare you people to make money in this business. That's my goal. I don't care if the neutron moves this way or that way or any of that coarse crap. What I care about is that when somebody brings crap here that is broken, can I fix it on this table and then put it in that slot where jobs go when they're done and there is money owed? That's what I care about. Can I make money off of what I know? And what I care about is getting all of you to learn this stuff. All of you people who have no fucking clue how most things in electronics engineering work. I try to make it simple. I try to dumb it down. I try to make it easy. And I'll admit, myself, I'm not an electronics engineer. I'm not a college graduate. I'm barely a high school graduate. I learn what I need to know to succeed in a particular business. All the fine prints. This is the wrong channel if you're looking to find it. But anyway, this person decided, you know, I'm going to go off on a tangent on how this piece of information is wrong. And by all means, I didn't even bother looking up if they were right. They're probably right. But the thing is, the way it was said, it's not going to offend me. I don't lose sleep over this. My pulse doesn't go up over this. But am I going to go out of my way to help this person become employed? No. No, I don't care. Be and if this person had phrases any other way, I might say, you know what? This is a smart and nice person. I feel bad. What can I do? Or can I hire this person? If I can hire this person, maybe my friend who has a similar business may need to hire this person. But that's the thing. And you went out of your way to be a jackass to prove that you knew something. Do I really care to help you? No. Now, am I a jackass at times? often. I'm a jackass a lot. But when it comes to people where I know I can get something out of them or where I'm hoping they can help me, I go out of my way to make them feel good. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to smile at shit that's not funny, but I'm not going to go out of my way to make them feel like an idiot. I'm not going to go out of my way to say how what they're doing is all wrong, this, that, and the other. 
And again, this goes back to the other video about contractors. You go on a work site and you start laughing and go, ha, 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 what idiot did this? You never know because the idiot who did that, that idiot may be the CEO of the company who is deciding the next contractor for their million-dollar project, and because of your dumbass comment, you didn't get it. Same goes here. You need to make people feel good about themselves to some extent if you actually expect them to want to deal with you. If you don't make people feel the least bit good about what they're doing or the least bit good about themselves, at the very least, not go out of your way to make them try to feel bad about what they've done or bad about what they've said, you may actually find that they are willing to help you. But if you can't do this, they're not going to be willing to help you. And, you know, my, I have a friend of mine who is very similar like-minded uh, as I am in this area. He goes a bit too far with it. I mean, he'll be flirting and flirting and flirting and flirting, and women will, will call back the office phone asking to speak to him specifically when he does not give a shit about them just because. And I'll ask, I'll, you know, like, dude, what's up? You, you have a girlfriend. Why are you doing this? You don't even like this woman. And he'll say, I made her feel good about herself. Since she feels good and she's happy and she's smiling, she's more likely to give me money. And it's true. It really is. If you make people feel good about themselves, whether in his method of flirting, which I am, I'm not a fan of that method, or with my method of just having some basic common courtesy, keeping your mouth shut when you see that something is ridiculous, or pointing out what they did right, the small things that they did right, even if everything else is done wrong so they can feel good about what they did, you'll realize they're going to want to use your services. They're going to want to help you with your problems. But when you act like a jackass for no reason, that is the wrong way to show that you know what you're talking about. Again, in junior high school, the teacher gets one little detail wrong. By all means, crucify them because it's funny. Because in junior high school, the teacher likes to work to point out how you're always wrong and how you're always doing something wrong and how you're not allowed to go to the bathroom because you went last week and all that bullshit. And it's funny, and the other kids will laugh, and they'll enjoy that you got one over on the teacher. And that's great for being a 12-year-old. But the difference between being a 12-year-old and between being a teenager and being an adult is that when you know more than somebody, you don't get to just hover it over them and expect that you're going to get somewhere. Because, again, this guy that was, that was writing the condescending crap, he may know more than me. There's a very good chance that he's smarter than me and more capable than me. And that the only reason that I am here and he is there, unemployed, is because he's an asshole to people. Again, I'm an asshole to a lot of people who deserve it, but I'm also an asshole to a lot of people who deserve it, who are never, most likely never going to be in a position where they can actually help me. I'm an asshole to people who call me at 2 in the morning asking if I can help them for free when they're clueless. I am not an asshole to regular people. I'm not an asshole to people who are actually in a position to help me. I'm not going to say yes to things I don't agree to, and I'm not going to laugh at jokes that are not funny. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a suck-up, and I'm not a dumbass. But if somebody is in a position where they can help me, and I see that they've set up an, you know, an NVR a network video recorder, and they have a bunch of analog cameras, and they're wondering why none of it works, I'm not going to say... Well, dumbass, wrong. I'm going to say, you know what? You made a good decision when you bought this NVR because you're choosing to go with higher quality IP cameras, which look a lot better than the regular ones. So you made a decision that most people are not going to make. I think you went in the right direction. The only thing is, the cameras you actually bought were analog. So let's go back with your original vision. You know, I, there are so many ways to bullshit where you can make people feel good about the things that they did, even when you think what they did was silly and dumb. And who do you think is going to get the client? The one who says, this is wrong. You have these cameras in this recording system? This is wrong. Or when you come in with my approach, who do you think is going to get the contract? Even if I am charging $500 or $1,000 more for that same installation, who do you think is going to get the contract? This is common sense. This is what I want you to be thinking about. This is the basic common sense that's going to get you somewhere in the world. And this is the stuff that they're not going to teach you at a course. This is stuff that they're not going to teach you in college. They're not going to teach you on on-the-job training. This is basic common sense that you're either born with or somebody like me beats into your head. But hopefully now that you watch this video, you'll learn something. And hopefully, since I'm going to have some more time, since I'm back in my office, I'm going to be able to go back to doing something closer to a daily or every other day board repair video because I kind of miss doing those. Since I did move back, I noticed that my microscope camera, I think I took the wrong lens because this piece of crap is never uh, zoomed at the angle that it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, I have to be zoomed much closer in for the microscope camera to be able to see anything. So I'm hoping I didn't fuck up my microscope or the microscope camera lens in the move. 
If I fucked up the lens, eh, that's 50 bucks. If I fucked up the microscope, that's that's like 400 bucks. So, <laughs> so I'm hoping I didn't screw any of those up. But yeah, hopefully I'll be able to st go back to doing some of those videos soon. Hopefully I'll remember to find my tripod so I don't have to stand the uh, camera at this funny angle. It's sitting in one of the squares that I use for holding machines that I have to refurbish, so that's why I had to lower my chair all the way down here. I'm sitting a little closer to the floor than I'm comfortable with. And that's about it for today.